Hey, this is David from Big Bits. And in this video, we're going to take a look at our fancy moving average indicator that we've been working on. And this indicator is capable of showing us multiple different moving average types, uh, along with many other settings, duration, uh, what resolution chart the moving average is for. Uh, and we're going to add a, another layer onto that in this particular video we are going to work with different candle types while looking at a uh, normal candle chart or any type of candles you can plot uh, a moving average for different types of uh, candles and by that I mean we're looking at a regular candle chart here but the moving average in the snapshot is actually for the Haken Ashi candles which uh, isn't really a huge difference compared to what they normally would be with the moving average, but uh, what this does show is that you can use this if you are trading based off of those types of candles, uh, you can calculate those indicators from any different chart that you're looking at and you can always have it use the particular types of candles that you like if you're using something different. So uh, really nothing to it other than to adding a new variable and then using a new function. We're going to continue to work with the security function. Uh, basically, we're going to have our own custom code in every part of that function. And it's going to now call those different functions in each of the three areas in the security. And then with the first part, we are going to give it the ticker ID, but we're going to get the ticker ID based off of a built-in function for the uh, different types of candles that we're working with. So I'll go ahead and show you what we've got. This is our indicator. Let's go ahead and show you a little bit about how it works when we change the candle type. Uh, we are using the current candle type, which is just a regular candle type right now. Uh, we switch it to the Haken Ashi, and I probably am butchering the pronounce uh, the pronunciation there but that's okay uh, the Rinko you can see it's calculating based off of those different candle types and let's actually leave it on Rinko and let's switch to that particular chart okay you can see why the line was so different okay and if you understand how Rinko candles work then you'll understand why the line looks so jagged here is because they may or may not update as frequently as the candle chart does here. Now, now that we have that, you've already seen we've, we've got our input here. We've got these very different types of candles that we can work with. Uh, so the first thing you're going to look at with the code is you're going to be adding a new input and we're going to have a new set of options. This is just like how we did our resolution. Uh, we added in uh, a whole array of different options. We set the default value to the current one, and you can select between the different types of candles. Now, in order to convert these strings, this array of strings, this, uh, these options, uh, in order to take one of those and have it selected and convert it into uh, what we need, we actually have to use a function to tell what the current value is that we have selected and then return the correct ticker ID uh, in order to calculate the correct moving average. Now the reason we have to do that is because we can't call the security function within an if statement or a for loop. I believe the for loop as well but definitely not in the if statement. And what that does is it kind of creates this constraint to where we have to create a function to return the ticker ID and then we have to do the security uh, f function on its own, okay? I'll show you what I mean by that, but let's go ahead and take a look at the function. You'll notice our other functions here, our moving average, our resolution, and now we have a new one called get ticker ID. Now we're passing in the candle type. This is gonna be the string that uh, the user selects in the inputs on the candle type, okay? So, with our nested if else statement here, we're going to first look at the current candle. Of course, we're going to return the current ticker ID. Okay, at 
moving on, this is pretty straightforward. Uh, once you get the hang of it and you look at the reference, uh, the PineScript reference, you can tell what you have available for you. And I just kind of went with the examples that they had. The uh, Hake and a she, this is a built-in function that you use to return the ticker ID for that particular candle type. So we call that function, we pass in the ticker ID. It's going to return this value from this function, and we're going to use that in the security call. Uh, you'll notice some of these, uh, like the Rinko, well, all the other ones have uh, extra options that you can define. I'm using the values that were provided in the examples in the reference manual. So if you want to change these uh, to whatever you want, you can. I didn't want to have these as inputs here because this would make a very long list. Uh, I've put in a request or, or a suggestion, I should say, to TradingView to be able to create input groups. That way, if we were to select the, uh, the Rinko, we could have inputs for these two. And also, I would like conditional inputs to where they would only show up if we selected a specific value. But that isn't there yet, so I'm not even going to bother creating the inputs for it. We're just going to go with the defaults, and that should be good. And like I said, since you're following along and you're coding yourself, you can probably just change those values to whatever you need if you think you need them as something different. Okay, so we've got our function, and really the only other thing that we've changed is the security call. When we are calculating our moving average, we use the security function. And like I said, this can't be within the if statement. Otherwise, I would have uh, created a function called calculate MA, and it would have basically done the same thing. It just would have used the ticker ID. Uh, it would have been its own line in each of those. It really would have just saved as one line of code, so it's not a big deal. Anyway, so within our security function, we are calling get ticker ID. That's the new function that we've made using our MA candle type, and it's going to return the ticker ID based on whatever function we have selected. And of course, our resolution based on that function that we had. And then finally, the moving average, which is the actual moving average calculation based on the values that we passed in for that. So we've come a long way with this particular indicator. I'm trying to think if there's anything else we can add to customize this particular indicator more. If you can think of anything that you would like to see on this one, please let me know, or any other one, please let me know in the comments section on the video. I'd really appreciate that. Uh, there's a lot of things we can do here, and if anybody wants any examples of anything, just let me know, and I'll try to take a look at them when I get a chance. So that pretty much does it for this video. If you want to actually find this indicator on TradingView, it is available in the public library. Just go to Indicators, and you can actually just search for Fancy Moving Average. You'll see it available in the public library, and you can actually add it to your chart like that. You can also check out my TradingView profile and go to the Scripts section, and you'll find it there. Uh, you'll find a bunch of information about the particular script, a copy of the source code as well. This one is open source. And you can also check out every, everything else that I've done, my ideas, my scripts, uh, my followers, all of that different type of information. You can check that all out there. So I, I appreciate you watching the video. If you've liked it, please leave a like on the video. That helps a lot. Also subscribing, that helps a lot too. But uh, if you like this video, then you probably do want to subscribe because we do a lot of videos like this where we are giving you uh, development examples and tutorials on PineScript and many other things. So please subscribe if you haven't already. But other than that, thank you and have a nice day.